here all in a very silly mood. I want to bring out a very funny lady. You probably know her. She might be your brownie troop leader, but she's also a stand-up concert. Please welcome to the stage, Lisa Campbell. recognize me from around town or the schools. Some of you might just recognize my voice. I'm that crazy woman you can hear clear across stop and shop screaming, Don't get stop! <laughs> That's me. So next time you're at Columbia Park and hear, Don't get! Come on over and say hi. I will bite your head off. I save that for my son. <laughs> Duncan's my six-year-old son, not my dog. I don't have any pets. I don't need them. I have children. It's quite enough to keep them walk, pet, and fed. I don't need to be carrying around bags of poop. In addition to Duncan, I have an eight-year-old daughter named Somer, a 39-year-old husband named Colin, a 40-year-old house with original bathrooms and windows, and three part-time jobs. So, as you can imagine, at night I have a lot of wine, sitting down to two, pretty wound up. I have a lot of friends, or maybe they're not really my friends, I'm not sure, but... I was having a hard time keeping in touch with everybody, so three years ago I started writing a Christmas letter. Now, I know what you're going to say, you hate the Christmas letter. I hate the Christmas letter. I get one of these things, I recycle it before I even read it, and then I throw the kid's picture away just for good measure. <laughs> Seriously, you're going to send me your page of lies? I ain't hanging your kid on my Christmas card. <laughs> the problem is, these things tend to be fantasy. What people want you to believe their life is, Mine's reality, and the reality is my life is a joke. So, since I bet you can't look away from a train wreck, I am going to share with you a, a story from my 2007 Christmas letter entitled, Having a Magical Day. In May, we took our second and very much likely last trip to Disney with Colin's mom, a.k.a. Grammy, along for the ride. What a ride it was when on day five of the seven-day trip, Duncan fell backwards off the heavenly bed at the Sheraton Resort, it being thus named for its closer proximity to heaven, since it's a good three feet off the ground. <laughs> he landed on his right forearm twisted behind him, promptly causing a buckle fracture in the tibia. What wasn't so prompt was the casting of said broken bones, since by the time we got to the pediatric emergency clinic, he had me convinced there was nothing wrong with him, and the doctor didn't bother with an x-ray. We were assured by the pediatric orthopedist in New Jersey, you know, where they have real medical professionals, <laughs> that no harm was done by allowing him to frolic around Disney for two days with a broken arm. <laughs> the fun continued when the stomach virus I picked up at the pediatric emergency clinic <laughs> attempted to take me out early in morning, day seven. I saw this only as an opportunity to further research my book, How to Be Sick on Vacation and Influence People. <laughs> Undeterred by my inability to stand for more than 15 minutes at a time, I napped on Main Street waiting for the parade and mapped out the best places to vomit in the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> Number one being behind Ariel's Grotto in Fantasyland. <laughs> I encountered a suspiciously audio-animatronic appearing a park employee shortly after the aforementioned purging. I explained the situation to the smiling woman who responded, In the mulch, have a magical day. <laughs> you guys have a magical night. Merry Christmas. Score. I have zero zero. <laughs> 